the President of the Republic of the Philippines, Ferdinand R. Marcos, Jr. Magandang hapon sa inyo lahat. And uh, thank you for this opportunity uh, for me to be able to make my uh, final statement uh, on this uh, trip from uh, uh, called, uh, the Philippine delegation to uh, the United States that we have uh, that we have just uh, finished. So, seeing as dahil hindi nga ako, dahil tutuloy nga ako sa, sa UK, uh, sabi ko eh, maaari, ito na yung kung baga hindi ako makakapag-arrival statement dun sa Manila, kaya't ipagkakataon ko na lang ito na makapag-bigay uh, uh, ng statement tungkol nga dito sa nakakatapos lamang na bisita natin sa United States at sa pamahalaan at kay President Biden sa pamahalaan ng uh, uh, Estados Unidos. So this uh, brings to an end my official working visit to Washington, D.C. Over the past four days, I met with Joe Biden, our, yeah, the President, Vice President Kamala Harris, my counterpart in the U.S. Department of Agriculture, Secretary Tom Vilsack, Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin, and several other cabinet officials who joined President Biden in our expanded bilateral meetings. Our discussions were very productive. We are of the same mind that our long-standing alliance and partnership must be adapted to address the challenges of our time in order to bring about lasting peace and sustainable prosperity to our countries and to our peoples. The joint statement we issued outlines the key initiatives that we will pursue across all areas of our bilateral engagement to achieve these objectives. I look forward to having our respective teams follow through on the many areas of cooperation that we have identified. This will help advance our key priorities with respect to agriculture and food security and to promote energy security as we transition to clean energy and boost trade and build resilience of our supply chains, enhancing connectivity and digitalization, also of climate change, mitigation and adaptation. In addition to existing bilateral policy dialogue platforms and working groups, we agreed to institutionalize a ministerial level study group to advance cooperation on climate smart agriculture, which I myself will lead. I also met with quite a few uh, US companies, both those looking to further expand their already valuable presence and operations in the Philippines, and those looking to invest in our country for the first time. They are all committed to be part of this development journey that we have embarked upon. We return to the Philippines with over 1.3 billion US dollars in investment pledges that have the potential to create around 6,700 new jobs for Filipinos within the country. When realized, these investments will support our country's economic recovery efforts and further strengthen the foundations of our economic environment. We expect even more investment that will lead to, uh, the to lead to materialize once these companies firm up their plans. Nevertheless, the interest is a welcome sign of their trust and confidence in the Philippines as an investment destination. Together, we will be working on addressing some of our key economic challenges, particularly food, energy, and health security, digital connectivity, and the cross-cutting issues of climate change and pandemic preparedness. The discussions that we had with the U.S. business community also affirmed the optimism which international investors view the Philippines today. It was with great pride that I received their praises for the talent, ingenuity, work ethic of Filipinos. This has become the main driving force from, for bringing their investments to our country. We also welcome all the initiatives to expand co collaboration with the Philippine government and our universities to support the continued growth of local talent. These, complemented by our game-changing economic reforms, 
will serve as a firm foundation for an indomitable partnership. My visit would not have been complete without meeting with Filipino community from the U.S. East Coast, as well as some who came all the way from the Caribbean. I thank them for their contributions to the communities in the Philippines and in the United States. They continue to bring honor to our country in the practice of their chosen professions. They continue to uh, bring a shine to the reputation of Philippines and Filipinos with their philanthropic work, especially during calamities and disasters that have touched so many lives. I urge our fellow Kababayans here in the East Coast uh, to continue to be our partners in promoting the country for tourism and investments. I then capped my visit with a speaking engagement at the Center of Strategic and International Studies, where I shared my reflections on why I think the Philippines and the United States has been and will continue to be naturally drawn to each other. Beyond our treaty alliance, we are bound by shared values and our commitment to mutual prosperity. I underscored my main message during this visit. The Philippines and the United States will have to forge closer economic ties and ensure that our bilateral partnership works for our people. That will bring a truly important alliance, a truly valuable partnership, and a continuing friendship into the 21st century. Thank you. I think there are a few questions. Yes, Mr. President. Press Corps. First question from Ms. Daphne Galvez of Inquire.net. Uh, good evening, Mr. President. Hi, good evening. Good evening, Naba. After, uh, yes. <laughs> uh, after the U.S. and the Philippines finalized its uh, bilateral, uh, bilateral defense um, guidelines, China said that the South China Sea should not be used as a hunting ground um, um, hunting ground for forces outside of the region, and it opposed what it called as meddling, um, meddling in the issue to harm China's sovereignty and maritime rights. What can you say about this, sir? Well, I, I, I do not think, <clears throat> uh, as representing as a Filipino and representing the Philippines, I don't feel alluded to. Uh, how can we, how can anyone uh, say that this, we are not a party in interest in all of these issues? So I think that kind of statement was directed more towards the United States than it was for the Philippines. Uh, I think the Philippines, um, uh, the Philippines' actions are in continuing to uh, strengthen our capabilities, to continue to find and forge partnerships with the United States, and uh, uh, both in the governmental uh, sector and also with the private uh, corporations that we have uh, spoken to as uh, an important part of uh, what we have been trying to uh, develop in the past almost one year. And that is, that is I think, uh, only right and proper uh, because we in the Philippines need to do this if we are going to uh, go forward and find uh, new opportunities for our people. At uh, hindi naman masasabi na walang karapatan ng Pilipinas na gawin lahat yun. Kaya, uh, yung statement na yan, eh, sa palagay ko, hindi nakadirect sa Pilipinas. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir, we have a question from uh, Tina Maralit of Manila Times. Hey, sir. Good afternoon, Paul. Um, sir, uh, prior to this trip, you said that you want the Mutual Defense Treaty to evolve. Um, in your sit-down with uh, President Joe Biden, were there specific provisions of the MDT that you discussed with him? And if so, Paul, what, what, what was his reaction? Again, uh, you have to... If the... the the specific provisions. Be prior to this trip, you ah. said that you want the MDT to evolve, but were you able to we're mention not, we're not specific? Yet there. Uh, and, uh, what we did, what we did in this trip, and what we have managed to to formulate are the guidelines, palang, uh, doon sa mga magiging provision at sa magiging detalye. But the premise continues to be the same. It's a strengthening of relationship. And we, uh, I, the, the, the word evolve is one that I have been using and that other people have seemed to adopt it, to have adopted 
Uh, uh, because that is exactly what it is that we need to do. We have to evolve. And why? Uh, to explain it is that we need to evolve because the situation that we face is uh, evolving. And when I speak about the evolu evo evo evolving uh, situation, I'm not only talking about security and defense. I'm talking about trade, I'm talking about economy, I'm talking about climate change, I'm talking about all the other aspects of, uh, uh, the, of our society, of our economy, and our, even our government, that uh, we, have to, uh, we have to adjust uh, as, a, as a response to what, the, the, what changes we are facing. Iba na ang mundo ngayon. Hindi nakagaya... Uh, kung ano yung mundo natin noong November ng 2019, hindi na natin makikita yon At uh, talaga namang ayaw natin bumalik doon. Uh, tayo ay uh, tumutungo sa kinabukasan natin. At uh, yun, kailangan natin kilalanin kung ano ang kailangan gawin dito sa bagong sitwasyon. Kaya evolve ang aking ginagamit na salita. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We have a question from Rayo Kiyomiya of Shimbun. Uh, thank you, President. Um, this is Rayo Kiyomiya from the Asahi Shimbun Japanese newspaper. Uh, I have two questions. Uh, so first, uh, regarding the tension in the Taiwan Strait, um, we, um, at your uh, meeting with President Biden and your counterparts, uh, what kind of discussion did you have to deter the contingency in Taiwan and how, how to uh, react to the Taiwan Strait crisis? And secondly, um, at the meeting with President Biden, um, joint statement mentions a trilateral cooperation, including Japan and Australia. So what kind of cooperation do you expect and what kind of role do you expect Japan to play for the stability and peace in the region? I expect a developing cooperation. Patuloy ang pagpatibay natin ng ating pagsasama at uh, pag, uh, pagpapartner dito sa ating mga sa iba't ibang bansa na hindi lamang yung mga nakapaligid sa Pilipinas, hindi lamang ang ating karating bansa, kundi pati na ang uh, mga bansa na dati hindi naman natin nakakausap dahil walang pangangailangan na makaroon tayo ng partnership. Uh, eh, kagaya ng pagsagot ko doon sa nakaraang uh, tanong, uh, yun talaga ay nagbago lahat. Kaya kailangan natin na uh, ayusin lahat ang ating mga uh, uh, arrangements we have to we have to we have to fix the, our arrangements our alliances so that they conform to the needs of the day and that's again we comes back again to that process of evolution uh, so but uh, because the situation is new then the solutions have to also be new and that is why we are now formulating those partnerships between uh, all the different countries not just Australia not just the United States now also South Korea, also Japan, all of the ASEAN member states. And I think we can continue to do, we can continue to do that. And I know that the countries, these countries that I have mentioned, have been or are already of the same mind. Pareho ng pag-iisip tungkol sa mga pangangailangan na natin gawin at kung saan, saan natin, saan ang pinaka makakatulong sa Pilipinas ng mga partnership. Sila rin ay ganyan din ang kanilang pag-iisip. Sila rin ay naghahanap na nga ng mga itong group na magsama-sama upang uh, uh, harapin ang bagong mundo na sabay-sabay. Uh, it seems that uh, the message of unity uh, that we were espousing during the campaign uh, is beginning to extend to unity not only in the local situation in the Philippines, but also in an international scale. Kaya yun ang naging talumpati ko nung ako'y nagsalita sa UN, na kailangan na natin magkaisa, kailangan na tayo magkaintindihan upang mag makapagtulungan tayo sa isa't isa. So, uh, I, I think it is not only the Philippines that thinks that way. Uh, it's not the, not the, not the only uh, Australia that thinks that way. It's not only the U.S. that thinks that way. I think every country in the world is uh, thinking in those terms. At least most of the countries that have not, uh, that, that have continued to keep open relationships with uh, their partner governments around the world 
are also of the same mind, and that's why I'm confident that that process will continue and will go from strength to strength. Thank you, sir. Thank uh, you. Mr. Marlon Ramos from PDI. Magandang gabi po, Mr. President. Yes. Sir, uh, you just made uh, very interesting remarks during the CSIS uh, forum this afternoon. You said, and I quote, the syndicates have uh, grown stronger, wealthier, and more influential, worryingly so. Uh, this despite uh, what you mentioned, abuses committed by certain elements in the government. Mm. Sir, uh, how, how do you assess the drug war of the previous administration, and how do you intend to... Uh, go after to make uh, those uh, people behind those abuses accountable? I'm in no position to assess the administration of anybody else. Uh, that's not, uh, that is not proper for me to, that's not a proper role for me to take. Uh, but uh, when you ask what, uh, uh, what, the, what we are doing, uh, well, uh, alam naman ninyo lahat, we formed the commission to, and I asked for the resignation of all uh, the police uh, of officers from Colonel up uh, so that we can assess and see and study what their records are. Kung sila ba ay uh, kasama sa mga sindikato, kung sila ba ay merong uh, uh, may kinalaman dito sa uh, patuloy na paglago ng uh, drug problem sa Pilipinas. Kaya yun ang palagay kong unang-una dahil Hindi mangyayari ito. Tignan naman nin, tignan na lang ninyo ang sitwasyon, ang drug problem sa lahat ng iba't ibang bansa sa buong mundo. Ay ang mga nagpapatakbo niya ay hindi yung mga maliliit na tao na nakikita mo sa sa lansangan na sila mismo nagbebenta o user sila. Hindi naman sila ang nagpapatakbo niyan. Ang nagpapatakbo niyan ay yung mga matataas na opisyal, kuminsan sa pulis, kuminsan sa gobyerno. So yun ang hinahambol natin. Kaya't isinimula natin sa police dahil law enforcement sila eh. Sila ang dapat na nakatutok dito sa problema ng ito. Kung hindi nag hindi gumaganda ang sitwasyon, ibig sabihin hindi nila nagagawa ang trabaho nila. At kaya naman natin ginawa yung ginawa natin upang tanungin bakit hindi ninyo nagawa ang trabaho ninyo. Baka may kakulangan sa sistema ng police. Ayusin natin. Eh baka naman talaga Ito ay uh, uh, kasabwat uh, doon sa ating mga tinatawag na uh, drug lord. At uh, kung yung iba, eh sila mismo ang nagiging drug lord. Kaya yun ang mga hinahabol natin. Kaya yan ang palagay ko, malaking bagay yan. Ngayon, sinasabi na kung magtanggal kahit na ma-identify natin sila, tatanggalin natin, may papalit dyan. Yun ang iiwasan natin. Yun ang binabantayan natin ngayon. So kas uh, sa kasalukuyan, yung dalawa na sa polis na nagbigay ng uh, courtesy resignation ay tinanggap na ang resignation. May tatlong po, labis na tatlong po na, na under investigation pa rin. Titignan natin kung sila ba ay dapat kasuhan, kung sila ba ay kailangan suspindihin, kung ano man. Dahil kung meron man silang kinalaman, sa mga drug syndicate, iba-ibang involvement. Meron yung pinababayaan lang, look the other way. Ika nga. Uh, they just look the other way. Ano yung magiging parusa para dyan? As opposed to, yun talagang pinapalakad, yung mga official, pinapalakad yung mga tropa nila para tulungan ang drug syndicate. Iba naman siguro ang sitwasyon na yun. Kaya yun ang pinag-aaralan natin para naman Eh, karamihan naman, marami naman sa pulis, sila namang involvement dyan ay mababait at talagang nagsisipag upang matuklasan at ma, ma, mabuo ang mga kaso na hinahawakan nila. Kaya uh, kailangan natin maging maingat din na hindi tayo, ha, hindi natin hahabulin yung mga walang kinalaman. Kaya kailangan natin pag-aralan kung sino ba talaga ang uh, ang dapat imbestigahan kung sino ba talaga ang dapat parusahan. Salamat. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. The last question from Mark Fetalco of PTV4. Good evening, sir. Um, maybe no po kung anong oras po kayo tutungo sa United Kingdom for King Charles coronation. And secondly, where do you see the Philippine-UK relations under King Charles reign? And ano po yung nakikita nating benefits po nito? 
At lastly, tatanggapin po ba natin yung imbitasyon po ni Prime Minister Rishi Sunak na makipagdialogo po sa inyo? Mm. Uh, well, alis ako mamaya. Uh, in a few hours. In two hours. Uh, alis na ako in, uh, in a while para makatungo, para darating ako sa uh, darating ako, bangla landing ako sa Gatwick. Uh, dahil ang dahilan kung bakit sa Gatwick ako maglalanda, usually hindi sa Gatwick ang pinupuntahan. Ngunit eh, ngayon ay pupuntahan ko yung Gatwick dahil titignan ko yung operation ng kanilang airport. Kung, pwede, kung bagay ba ito, yung mga lessons learned nila, yung mga ginagawa nila, kung best practices yan na pwede, pwede nating dalhin sa, sa Pilipinas. At uh, isa sa pinakamalaking dahilan kung bakit ako pupunta ay kilala namin si Prince Charles pa ang pagkakilala ko sa kanya. At uh, uh, kaming lahat ay eh, uh, nung uh, namatay nga ang, uh, si uh, Queen Elizabeth ay hindi ako, hindi ako nakapunta. At uh, ang pinadala ko si, uh, ang kapatid ko na si Irene, nakilalang kilala rin ni eh, Prince Charles. Kaya uh, sabi ko naman, ay eh, palagay ko, dahil uh, magkakilala kami, dapat naman, uh, napakalaking bagay na siya'y kukuronahan bilang hari ng uh, United Kingdom, ay eh, dapat makapag-attend na ako. At ang, sa, situ uh, sa the, <laughs> the UK is a constitutional monarchy. So, in terms of foreign policy, may input ang royal family. Pero hindi galing doon. It will be the foreign ministry that will determine what our relationship with uh, the UK is. And I think uh, that will, I, I think that uh, that is uh, uh, constant right now. And patuloy lang naman, uh, we trade and uh, uh, we continue to, uh, uh, we continue to uh, help ang ating mga foreign na uh, Filipino nationals na nandun sa, sa UK. At uh, uh, yun lang siguro ang mga concern natin. Ngunit, titignan natin. Kaya uh, makikipagkita ako sa kanilang bagong uh, Prime Minister, Prime Minister Sunak, upang makapag-usap kami kung merong bang pagbabago sa kanyang pag-iisip sa pag-partner uh, pag ng UK at saka ng Pilipinas. Sa palagay ko ay uh, ganun din ang sasabihin niya na dapat eh, papatibayin natin at eh, naghihing ano hirap na hirap ang ang hirap na hirap ang ekonomiya ng UK. So baka baka isa, isang bagay yun na pag-uusapan namin kung paano mag-trade o kung paano dagdagan isa sa lahat I'm sure babanggitin niya kung pwedeng makakuha ng healthcare workers galing Pilipinas dadalhin sa UK dahil alam mo nangyari nung pandemic sumikat talaga ng husto ang healthcare workers na Pilipinas na Pilipino at Pilipina at kaya uh, uh, lahat ng uh, lahat ng bansa ay umaasa at uh, nagtatanong kung pwede ba ay uh, paramihin natin ng mga healthcare workers na pupunta so isang bagay yun but i think in general uh, we will maintain the same uh, same relationship uh, it has been a very uh, a relationship very advantageous to all uh, uh, parties involved. So uh, I think that uh, we will stay the course and uh, continue to uh, deal with each other in a very similar way that we have done before. Sir, on the sidelines lang. Dahil kung titignan nyo yung schedule, pagdating ko doon, may reception sa Palacio, sa Buckingham Palace. The next day is the coronation. Pagkatapos ng coronation, alis na ako, babalik na ako ng Maynila. Kaya't wala at halos oras. So, meron ako, may mga proposal, makikipag-usap ako, uh, siyempre sa Prime Minister, Prime Minister Sunak. Pero habang siguro nag-aantay dun sa, dun sa actual na uh, seremonya ng, ng pag-coronation uh, pag, uh, sa King, King, King Charles, uh, so, ganun, ganun na lang. It has to be very casual dahil everybody has followed a very uh, heavy schedule of the coronation. Meron din mga request ng ibang leaders na mga gusto makipag-usap sa akin, pero ganun din, puro ganun. Ang tawag ni, uh, uh, ginagawa na lang natin, pagka may pagkakataon, ay mag-alika, mag usap tayo. Uh, and, siguro, and that's what's going to happen siguro this time again. Because I cannot see any... 
window where of time in, in the schedule kung saan pwedeng mag-sit down, uh, mag, ano, mag-usap, uh, to exchange notes, etc. Et uh, so very casual lang ito, very informal. Pero wag, wag natin mamalitin yung mga ganyang klaseng meeting dahil kuminsan, uh, yung hindi mo inaakalain mangyayari, may nangyayari na napaka-importante pala. Kaya siyempre open tayo lagi uh, na makipag-usap sa lahat. At uh, baka naman sakali meron tayong makita pagkakataon na makatulong sa Pilipinas. Thank you Mr. President and okay. congratulations. Maraming salamat sa inyo lahat. Thank you very much and uh, see you in Manila, Philippines. <laughs>
Kaya't ay pagkakataon ko na lang ito na makapagbigay uh, ng statement tungkol nga dito sa nakakatapos lamang na bisita natin sa United States at sa pamahalaan uh, kay President Biden sa pamahalaan ng uh, uh, Estados Unidos. So this uh, brings to an end my official working visit to Washington, D.C. Over the past four days, I met with Joe Biden, our, yeah, the President, Vice President Kamala Harris, my counterpart in the U.S. Department of Agriculture, Secretary Tom Vilsack, Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin, and several other cabinet officials who joined President Biden in our expanded bilateral meetings. Our discussions were very productive. We are of the same mind that our long-standing alliance and partnership must be adapted to address the challenges of our time in order to bring about lasting peace and sustainable prosperity to our countries and to our peoples. The joint statement we issued outlines the key initiatives that we will pursue across all areas of our bilateral engagement to achieve these objectives. I look forward to having our respective teams follow through on the many areas of cooperation that we have identified. This will help advance our key priorities with respect to agriculture and food security and to promote energy security as we transition to clean energy and boost trade and build resilience of our supply chains, enhancing connectivity and digitalization, also of climate change, mitigation and adaptation. In addition to existing bilateral policy dialogue platforms and working groups, we agreed to institutionalize a ministerial level study group to advance cooperation on climate smart agriculture, which I myself will lead. I also met with quite a few uh, US companies, both those looking to further expand their already valuable presence and operations in the Philippines and those looking to invest in our country for the first time. They are all committed to be part of this development journey that we have embarked upon. We returned to the Philippines with over 1.3 billion US dollars in investment pledges that have the potential to create around 6,700 new jobs for Filipinos within the country. When realized, these investments will support our country's economic recovery efforts and further strengthen the foundations of our economic environment. We expect even more investment that will lead to, uh, the to lead to materialize once these companies firm up their plans. Nevertheless, the interest is a welcome sign of their trust and confidence in the Philippines as an investment destination. Together, we will be working on addressing some of our key economic challenges, particularly food, energy, and health security, digital connectivity, and the cross-cutting issues of climate change and pandemic preparedness. The discussions that we had with the U.S. business community also affirmed the optimism which international investors view the Philippines today. It was with great pride that I received their praises for the talent, ingenuity, work ethic of Filipinos. This has become the main driving force from, for bringing their investments to our country. We also welcome all the initiatives to expand co collaboration with the Philippine government and our universities to support the continued growth of local talent. These, complemented by our game-changing economic reforms, will serve as a firm foundation for an indomitable partnership. My visit would not have been complete without meeting with Filipino community from the U.S. East Coast, as well as some who came all the way from the Caribbean. I thank them for their contributions to the communities in the Philippines and in the United States. They continue to bring honor to our country in the practice of their chosen professions. They continue to uh, bring a shine to the reputation of Philippines and Filipinos with their philanthropic work, especially during calamities and disasters that have touched so many lives. I urge our fellow Kababayans here 
in the East Coast uh, to continue to be our partners in promoting the country for tourism and investments. I then capped my visit with a speaking engagement at the Center of Strategic and International Studies where I shared my reflections on why I think the Philippines and the United States has been and will continue to be naturally drawn to each other. Beyond our treaty alliance, we are bound by shared values and our commitment to mutual prosperity. I underscored my main message during this visit. The Philippines and the United States will have to forge closer economic ties and ensure that our bilateral partnership works for our people. That will bring a truly important alliance, a truly valuable partnership, and a continuing friendship into the 21st century.